Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about a couple of VS Code extensions that you should be using when you are programming with React. They're great for beginners, they'll help you keep your code clean, and a lot of the times they'll extend the functionality so that it saves you time from having to do a lot of monotonous things. Now, if you find value in this video, please make sure you hit that like button and leave a comment. It helps so much with the YouTube algorithm. I can't even tell you how much it helps get these videos out there. I'm going to start off with three VS Code extensions that I personally find really useful. And then I'm going to talk about another three that I found online while researching for this video that I thought could be cool that I don't personally use right now. So let's jump into it. The first pair of extensions, actually, it's a pair, is VS Code and, or sorry, ESLint and Prettier. Now, if you've heard of ESLint before, you know that it's pretty much a style guide for your entire JavaScript project. Essentially, what it does is it helps ensure that the code is standardized in the way that you code it throughout the entire application so that if you or other people ever need to onboard on onto the uh, code, it's a lot easier for people to come on and read your code. It just makes it a lot easier to maintain. Now, for example, a rule that you might see here is how many, um, for example, how many tabs you can have between opening divs. So you can see here, if I just allow my H3 to have this many indents before going to uh, the actual text, you can see here my code editor is going to highlight that there is an error here and it must be placed on a new line. So a lot of the times we can go ahead and click that and that didn't do what it was supposed to do. But the good thing about Prettier is when you save your file, what the Prettier extension do is it sort of co um, comes together with the ESLint standards that you have set up and it will automatically format it so that if, for example, all your code is incorrectly indented or you have indents over here and wrong indents over there, as soon as you save it, it'll go ahead and make everything okay. Another cool part is you can customize all these rules. So for example, if I were to delete this type from this button, you can see that I currently have an ESLint error that says React button has type. If I, for example, for whatever reason wanted to code without that rule being there, I can find my ESLint R C file, which comes with a create react app, which I assume most people are using to create the react apps. And I can go ahead and type react slash button. What was it again? It was react slash button has type button has type and I can go ahead and set that to off. And now if I were to go ahead and save it, you can see that that error is now gone. Now you might be thinking, how do you know which rules to turn on and which rules to keep off? Well, the good part is there is a standard that a lot of React developers like to use and it's pretty much the Airbnb's ESLint standard. I'm gonna leave a link in the description on how you can set your ESLint and prettier up with Airbnb standards. That way you can code in a way that the majority of the React world uh, codes in and when someone looks at your code, it's not going to look like, you know, you did something completely crazy. I highly recommend it. I've gotten used to the rules. Some of them I'll turn off and I have my own custom configurations for my projects. But overall, it's such a time saver, especially with Prettier being able to just hit save and have everything format properly for me. Now, our next application is going to be one called GitLens. This one's not really React specific, but I find it super useful, especially if you're developing with other developers or doing a project with a friend. It allows you to be able to go ahead and highlight any line and see the last person who committed to against it, aka the last person who changed it, and see when they changed it, how long ago they changed it, and what commit it was a part of. It then allows you to click on the commit and go to the actual commit chain so you can see all the differences and all the other files they may have modified during that commit. I find this super helpful when I am on the job because a lot of the times you're going to be working with other developers in different files that they might have touched or your files that they might have come in and modified. And if you really want to understand what sort of went on in their mind while they were changing it, usually the commit message is something a lot more helpful than just redo, but it'll give you a lot of insights. And I think it's definitely one of the most collaborative and best Chrome uh, VS Code extensions that you can have. Now our next extension is React specific and just like Prettier where it does something automatic for you that you don't have to do yourself, it is called the ES7 React, Redi uh, React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippets extension. Essentially, snippets in VS Code allow you to type a shortcut and when you click enter and select it from the menu, it will actually create a whole bunch of code on your machine without you having to write it all. So this is extremely good for boilerplate code, especially things like um, React components. So as you can see here, if I type in RFC, it's going to give me the option to do a React functional component and it will automatically go ahead and create a React functional component for you. Now, if you're a more advanced user, you might like your, your um, function 
functions set up in a different way. For example, I like mine just being a simple arrow function and then at the bottom of the file I like to go ahead and default export app like this. And what I've done to do that is I pretty much coded my own VS Code snippets, which I'll probably cover in another topic, but this snippet right here and this all the snippets that come with this extension, there are so many of them, and I'm sure that if you're a beginner in React, it'll make your life a lot easier instead of having to remember all this boilerplate code for every single component that you have to go ahead and make. Now for me personally, those are the only extensions that I really use to develop, other than some that make my editor look a, a bit cooler with different colors and stuff. Stuff like that. But there were a couple of honorable mentions I wanted to go through that I found online while researching for this video. One of them is called the Bracket Pair Colorizer. And what this essentially does is it will take any of your squiggly or square or parentheses and essentially color them depending on where they are in the uh, order and, and how they're nested. So that way you can tell easily where one function ends and another one might start. I don't find this too useful when I'm working with React, um, especially because a lot of the times I'm not going to have a lot of nested bra brackets everywhere. But where I can see this being useful is if you are working with a lot of JSON files or if you just have some really messy JavaScript code um, or really long uh, JavaScript code that you have to sort of sort through in order to get things done. Um, I can see it being helpful in those types of situations. Another extension I wanted to talk about was this auto rename tag one. Now this one's sort of interesting. Sometimes you might find yourself, especially Especially when you're working with Reacts, wanting to name the tag something different. For example, if I had this H2 tag and I wanted to make it an H1, well, what this extension will do is anytime I edit the name of the opening or closing tag, it will then go ahead and edit the other one. So, for example, if I were to change this to just H1, you can see it also changed the ending tag to H2. And if I were to go ahead and let's say, for example, go ahead and delete that and type in something like div or like a P tag, it would do the same thing to the ending closing tag. And now the last extension I wanted to talk about is one that I found sort of cool and I might actually start making use of after this video. It's one called VS Code React Refactor. Now I find myself in this situation a lot of times where I might have, you know, r right now as you can see on the screen, this is sort of pretty basic and not really convoluted JSX, but a lot of the times we find ourselves making new components within components and sometimes it gets really messy and I want to move it into its own component but then I feel like it's going to take a lot of time. You get stuck in that sort of position but what this extension allows you to do is you can go ahead and hire whatever you think should be its own component, click this little light bulb and then you can make it into a functional component, choose to name it like let's say for example like new component.jsx and it will go ahead and it will pretty much make um, the new component.jsx. Now as you can see, you probably want to turn this into a new file. This one got sort of messy. Actually, I realized you're not even supposed to pass the extension, just the component name in, and then I guess you move it into your own um, you move it into your own file after that. Actually, I wonder. Let me check and see if there's any way to uh, make it into a new f um, a new file itself. Um, yeah, okay, so it looks like you're going to have to once you uh, do this. So let's say, for example, let's try that again and call this like um, like test my test component or whatever. So you can see over here, it'll make that new component for you. And then if you wanted to move that into a new file, you could go ahead and just, you know, make it a new file yourself. But it is helpful that it at least, um, you know, extracts it out of the regular JSX and it re-adds it back here with the tags and stuff like that, including any uh, props that you might actually need to pass in, which I think is a cool little touch. So yeah. That is it for this video. If you have anything that I missed, leave it in the comments. If there's anything else related to VS Code and Reacts that you'd like to learn about, also leave it in the comments. I'm thinking of doing another video on snippets, but if you found value in this video, please remember to hit that like button and make sure you leave a comment. It helps so much with the algorithm, and I'll see you guys in the next video.